Uh, before you start, Mr Chairman, uh, we never um, passed the recommendation on item one. It's coming now, is it? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we're... Right, let's continue handing to you, Aaron. Yeah, thank you, your Chairman. Um, so, um, since our last um, committee meeting, um, the contractors had been affected by 23 wet days. Um, we had no work's been able to take place on the main trench. Um, there's been a couple of health and safety instances that have happened. Um, one of them's quite minor. Um, during an audit site visit that I was at, um, noticed that one of the staff members was inside a manhole without any PPE. Um, so they rectified that fairly smartly. Um, and yeah, so we're working pretty closely with them at the moment. And are you satisfied with the progress to date? Uh, it's at the moment they're currently in the um, deepest section, so things are a lot slower than um, what they envisioned and, and what council would had envisioned. Um, so. Um, there is currently, we're going through a um, revi revised um, plan with them to um, find out when the, we plan to finish the project. So it's going to be finishing a bit later than scheduled. I see you've appointed or selected some uh, a group of plumbers to do the private connect connections, which seems to be an important milestone, I would think. Yes, yeah, so um, through that... Um, private property separation, we now have elected um, a panel of three local plumbers. Uh, so there's Gore Elite Plumbing, Gore Southern Plumbing and Heating, and Shedden Plumbing um, that will carry out that um, private property separation. Um, currently, um, I have five proposals for the first five properties um, that are going through cost analysis now and approval process for consents. Um, so that's starting at the Broughton Street end, working their way along. So um, that's going to move along quite nicely. Thank you. Uh, I'll open it for questions from the committee members. Yeah, so um, on that, we um, do a first visit, um, ascertain how the private property will be separated. Um, then the plumber will go away and, and come up with a plan and a costing. And then I'll go and have an on-site meeting with the property owner um, and seek their approval for that work to carry out and get them to sign an agreement um, where we... Um, will agree on any reinstatement if there's any trees that need to be removed or or that sort of thing. Um, and when the work starts, we take photos before so that there's no discrepancies on of anything. Um, and same when it's finished. So, yep, no, so far we haven't had any issues. So, yep. If it's all right, I'll just add to... Um, what Aaron's saying there. Yeah, um, so, um, since the report's been written, um, and, and last <coughs> last week, um, Fulton Hogan did have a reasonably um, serious near miss on site where a, a digger tipped over. 
um, and as a result of that, uh, we stopped work on site um, and reviewed the construction methodology that they were using and have amended that to make sure that the work can be completed safely. Um, and as of today, we're now happy with, with the revised work methodology and they're, and they're getting work back underway. Um, but that has delayed um, the, the progress. It, it's particularly the area that they're working through now is, is proving to be quite challenging because of the, the depth and the ground conditions and things. Um, but they're certainly, um, particularly following the recent <coughs> incident, um, taking things pretty cautiously and, um, and making sure that they do it safely. Um, I guess to add to that, to the, I've sort of been in a, a, a relative, the progress over the last three or four weeks has been pretty slow uh, because of those complications um, and they have been affecting the driveways of well, about three properties um, during that time. Um, so they've had an extended period where they haven't um, had access to their property, vehicle access to their property, um, but we are keeping in close contact with them and, and making sure that um, we can do what we, whatever we can do. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, after a discussion with you, it sounds like it is a complex, a complex process and it, 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 it's something that I didn't actually appreciate. So it's, um, to use your words, challenging piece of work and at five metre depth and a bit of danger involved and weather conditions. So. I guess it is what it is. I see we're probably about 35% through our budget. Um, you're quite, it's probably too early to ask you uh, where we're gonna end up, but you're happy at the moment. We're tracking as we should do. Uh, yeah, it, so far everything's tracking where we should be. So no concerns there. Thank you. I guess uh, um, it'll be an update the next committee meeting. Uh, more questions? Okay, we'll... Uh... Oh, Mike, how are you? Welcome. Are you, are you there? Yes, Mike, uh, we'll take your question now. Um, so there's been a full investigation um, carried out by Fort and Hogan um, and we've been um, privy to a lot of that information through reports um, through <coughs> our um, through Matt and myself and the engineers um, and a lot of that is being relayed back into our own health and safety um, recording database so that that can be captured for future reference as well. So hopefully that answers that. Yes, that's good. And the, and the second question I have is, where we have delayed or restricted access to people's property, and it's taken longer because of the bad weather, have we kept communicated with them, or have we relied on them to observe that they no longer have access to their property? Um, we had asked that um, Fort and Hogan kept in close contact with the um, property owners. Um, so um, that's something that we've relayed a number of times with, with the contractor. So um, there's a... So, so, so does the council have a mechanism where if one of those homeowners complained, and they, they put a complaint into the council, that presence of that complaint would come back to this project? Uh, yes, um, those complaints would come directly to me. Good questions, Michael. Thank you very much and welcome. Uh, John? Just another question is, when we do have a health and safety issue with the contractor and we put a trough, who actually pays the loss? <laughs> uh, through the chair, um, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's the contractor's responsibility to ensure the work is completed safely. Um, so I guess that issue uh, sits with the contractor. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I've never been through a situation where a contractor's tried to claim for costs around that sort of delay, um, and I'd have to work through the contract details. But ultimately, I think um, it, it, it sits with the contractor, and, and they need to make sure that it's done safely. Um, Steve, you might want to add. Mr Perry? Yeah, it actually works in reverse um, through you, Mr Chair, that uh, I haven't seen, Matt and Aaron might uh, be able to tell me, but uh, often there is a provision for liquidated damages uh, for late delivery of the project and then for the, the client, uh, if, if it can prove reasonable loss, can charge uh, the fixed amount per day specified in the contract for late delivery. Any more comments, questions? Neville? Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I believe there's an article in Takadari today, is there, in regards to that? Yeah. Yeah, I think there is. A picture yep, of the digger. That's correct, there is. Yep. Yeah. Given it, was a, it, it is a relatively flat site, tipping the digger over, there must have been lifting something to heat or something, because you wouldn't tip a digger over on a flat site just. <laughs> Um, given the um, unstable ground, um, the five metre depth that they're digging at, um, the fact that um, they are were backfilling, um, it, it made for a, a pretty complicated work site, um, and uh, they were also working over a trenched lateral um, so yeah it, it sort of was some complicated situation that occurred right have we any more qu questions or comments just if I can Mr Chairman to say that uh, I have uh, when this incident occurred had direct dialogue with the regional manager of Fulton Hogan um, and it certainly was taken very seriously uh, at the highest levels uh, to get matters right. And, and obviously uh, we wanted to make sure that the revised methodology was signed off uh, before the stop work notices were uplifted. Thank you, Mr Perry. Um, would someone be prepared to move that we receive that report, please? Thank you. Stuart. Those in favour, please say aye. Seconded by John. Those in favour, please say aye. Against it carried. We'll go back to item one. I'll move that we uh, accept that report, which was the capital project register. Seconded in Neville, thank you. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Against it's carried. Item three, Wigan Street Wastewater Mains Replacement Update. There's been a significant amount of work over a long period of time, and now... Um, from reading the report, there's um, some issues going under, well, not necessarily issues, but uh, have to go under the railway lines and uh, through private property, which will uh, require some negotiation and timing with other people. Um, as I understand it, the work to date has gone very well, and I'll hand over to you, Matt, for some comment, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, so this, um, we obviously completed stage two um, was that earlier this year um, and have been working on the design of, of stage three um, for the last few months. Um, it's a reasonably complicated section of, of wastewater main to replace because it, it passes through private property, um, the rail corridors, the state highway and the Ardwick Street playground. Um, but design is, is going reasonably well. Um, there's probably two significant uh, or two main issues that we're working through at the moment. Um, one is to get the, the easement um, required to go through private property. Um, we've been in contact with a couple of landowners regarding that um, and hopefully um, expecting to take a report to council at the, um, at the next council meeting. Uh, with some recommendations um, regarding obtaining the, the necessary easement that we need for, for the project. Um, the other um, 
I guess issue that we're monitoring pretty closely is, is um, the fact that Kiwi Rail have got a, um, a project in the same area um, to upgrade the, the railway siding. Um, and so we're trying pretty hard to align the projects and make sure that um, we don't have to rip up their brand new tracks. Um, it is proving a little bit difficult, um, but at this stage we're hopeful that um, we can align the projects. I'm happy to take any questions. I've got a question, uh, Mr. Perry. Um, the recommendation is that we receive the report, but at the end of this report, there's an additional recommendation that um, 1.75 million of funding be allocated to the 23-24 financial year to take this work that that is brought forward. Now, is, is this um, actually just for our information and should be dealt with by full council? Or um, I'm just wondering why that is there. Um, through Mr Chair, it's, it ultimately will be determined by the full council. These minutes and recommendations go through to full council. Uh, so, um, yep, I, I mean, apart from the, uh, the I can't state the reason why the recommendation is there, but really it's, it's just it's for completeness in terms of um, realigning our budgets to actually uh, complete this work in a timely way and to obviously coincide with the QRAL's works program. Right, so if we receive the report, the report will then go to full council and that recommendation as to the finances will then be considered with full council. So that's just the implication of that there. Um, yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned that um, in my introduction, but um, yeah, the reason behind that um, is originally we'd planned to do this work in the 2023-24 uh, financial year, but to allow us to align it with the Kiwi Rail project, we need to bring that funding forward um, into the 22-23 financial year. So, um, yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. I noticed referring to our traffic light system there is no uh, lights other than green uh, indicating that we're on track and you're satisfied with how things are going. Fine. Any questions from the committee or further comments? Okay. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Matt, pretty exciting. Stage three, where is that going to end? Is that over in Ardwick Street, is it? Through the chair, yes. It will finish <coughs> at the intersection of... Um, Ardwick and Eccles Street. Yeah, and then that, that'll be stage four after that. Yeah, so yeah. There'll, be, there'll need to be a further stage up Ardwick Street. Um, it's that there's two water mains that run up there, um, and we need to look at uh, we'll probably need to look at stormwater up there as well. So yes, yeah, so um, the, the stage three is the most most critical part really when we're coming across all that. Yeah, it would certainly be pretty problematic if um, if we had a failure under one of those key areas. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, this is certainly the high priority, and, and I guess once we get this completed, we can stop and reassess and, and look at the next stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I next stages will be good. It's, um, yeah, getting underway with the main trunk, so, yeah, the council should be happy. Okay. Uh, Councillor Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'd just like to uh, congratulate the staff on uh, pre-thinking about the whole project and also being involved um, with uh, NZTA and keeping them away from sealing the road, etc., and, and aligning things in a, in a timely and, and probably a financial benefit for us. Would someone like to move that we receive the report? Councillor Goat. <laughs> no, certainly not. Would you like to move we receive the report? Moved by John. Seconded, please. Sir McDonald. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, that's carried. Item number four, Gore and Matara wastewater consent renewal project. Um, <laughs> this is one of those um, very important issues 
with some certain potential for some complication when you're having to deal with other parties and seek their approval. But uh, I note from the report council is moving on uh, with the best advice uh, that it can receive and we seem to be heading uh, well. Matt, would you like to give us a, an overview? And then I think I'll refer to Mr Perry as far as their consenting. Yes. <laughs> for a guarantee about the consent thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, so since the last committee meeting, um, Paddle Delamore Partners have been busy working away on their long list options assessment. Um, they've certainly um, been requesting a lot of information and, and talking to us a lot about um, our existing data and things. Um, unfortunately, they had hoped to have the long list options assessment completed by now. Um, but, but there's been some delays in getting that done. Um, so we have had a, a discussion with them around making sure that we, we keep on track with this project, obviously. Um, yeah, there's some, some critical dates in there and it, it is a pretty long time frame. Um, PDP are very confident that they can catch up the time and, and still make that, that ultimate deadline of um, is it October 23 in terms of identifying the preferred option. Um, there is a, a workshop planned, um, or a technical working group meeting planned for next week um, to discuss PDP's initial findings. Um, so that will be quite interesting and then following that they'll, they'll produce a report around the long list options assessment. Um, I guess the other thing to mention is um, with, with the estimated costs we are expecting to, to go slightly over budget. Um, when compared to the original long-term plan budgets. Um, however, there's probably not a lot of certainty around that at this stage, and, and we're expecting as the, the options assessments are completed, we will get more certainty. Um, so um, we'll, we'll sort of provide updates around that as, as the project progresses. Uh, thank you. Just for the, for the benefit of those people um, looking at our live stream, this is has its own unique complications in, in as much as the RMA um, dictates that we must have uh, cultural input from from uh, local uh, Runanga as to their um, ability to discharge uh, wastewater into the Matara River, which has been their practice. So there's been consultation with the uh, with the Runanga, the um, intention in the, in the initial stage is to, is to invest over time, considerable length of time, between 50 and 60 million in upgrading the on-site treatment of that um, wastewater. And then there was some discussion as to uh, how it can be discharged. And there's a committee to consider the options. One of those options will be discharged to land and there'll be variations on those themes. So it will be a work in progress with, uh, with local cultural interests. And I'll ask uh, the Chief Executive to, have you got comment? Yes, thanks, Mr Chairman. Look, I think this, is, this project is indicative uh, of the fact that matters have changed. Uh, iwi have, a, as best as I can understand it, uh, a, a spiritual connection with uh, the river and do not like at all, I find it repugnant, the, the concept of wastewater going into a food source. And so land-based disposal is the uh, best of, I'm, I'm aware, uh, still the preferred option. Um, and um, this, is, this, this process, I believe, will result in a dramatic change in the way that the council treats its, and views it, the way it treats its wastewater. Um, whether we get to participate in the process fully or whether Three Waters Reforms um, arrives and takes the issue off our table is a moot point. But um, all the signs point to a serious inquisition as to how the Council treats its wastewater uh, and a marked improvement. And of course, uh, it's not just EWI, it's the, the, the consenting authority is operating under a heightened... Um, national policy statement for fresh water, 
uh, and there is um, a deep-seated ambition to improve river water quality in our rivers. So this is all going into the melting pot, uh, and out of that you can definitely expect um, a stricter regime for treatment of wastewater. Thank you, Mr Perry. So as you'll appreciate, it's a multi-layered uh, endeavour over a long period of time. Uh, but it, it, let's look at it positively. The end result will be an improvement on what we currently have accepted. Uh, and we have a little bit of time up our sleeve. Any questions or comments from uh, staff and from committee members? Thank you, Mike. It really relates to how we manage the costs uh, associated with three waters because uh, we obviously want this project done and we want it done reasonably quickly. Uh, but if it goes over the three waters deadline, then uh, as noted in the report, there's going to be a re-look by the entity in terms of priorities. It's a difficult one, so we'd better pass that on to Mr Perry. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, good, good question, Michael. I see this as in a different category. Uh, that your question is well put and applies a lot in regard to mm. infrastructure improvement. So the previous item we talked about before regarding, and Councillor Grant asked about the ongoing uh, improvements to our trunk main from ending up at Arbrook Street. That's infrastructural improvement, and yes, it has an indirect uh, uh, impact and benefit to uh, what ultimately uh, comes out at the end in terms of treatment. This is part of a consented process, and now we are into a, a slipstream of a process. We've applied for a resource consent to Environment Southland, and we're in the early phases of the consideration of that consent. I don't see any um, intervention of a three waters reform and the creation of a new entity being able to influence um, how certainly the maybe how we get there but the the fact that we're in this process uh, other parties have got um, a legislative right uh, to be involved and that there is also the national policy statement on fresh water they will ultimately influence the outcome so I don't see that we will lose control necessarily. I think we'll, we'll, we've already created the control by pushing the go button. And the go button had to be pushed because our resource consent has expired or just about to expire. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions? Go on. Would somebody like to move or receive this report? Thank you, uh, Stuart. Seconded, John. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. And this will be the next item. Uh, dear to Neville's heart, Matara Water Treatment Plant Upgrade. And the associated um, report there, an upgrading of the historical uh, facility in Matara. I'll hand over to staff to give us a uh, lead us through. Yes, yeah, thank you, your Chairman. Um, <clears throat> so um, on this one, um, we've just f finished um, our tendering process. Um, so we're currently reviewing those at the moment. Um, so, um, so no physical work's actually taken place on site, um, and we hope to um, have the tender review 
um, before council on the 20th of September. Um, and yeah, that's about it, if there's any questions. Can you just give us just a quick overview as to actually what the physical work will? Yeah, so um, the work to be carried out is to bring the treatment plant up to drinking water standards. So there will be um, a refurbishment of the treatment plant, um, a filter upgrade of the filters, um, raw water uh, tank upgrade, um, some pipe work, a full electrical upgrade, um, proposed UV. Um, I think that's about it, yeah. Thank you, and the approved budget for that work is uh, two and a quarter million. Um, I guess we've also got the other issue in the background of our, so where our source for water is and the piping for water, and I know it's not in the agenda, but have you got a, a brief comment here? We might approach that, or is that probably an easy question to ask, but difficult to answer? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so obviously, um, we prior to, to getting into the detailed design of this project, we look at looked at some different options, which would allow us to move away from um, using the Plura Dam as our primary water source, um, predominantly supplying. Matara from Gore and also working with uh, the Alliance Meatworks to um, have a, a joint source directly from the Matara River. Um, unfortunately, um, those options didn't work out predominantly because of the large capital cost. Um, we have also done a reasonable amount of, um, of drilling and um, other investigation work to try and find alternative water sources around Matara in close vicinity to the treatment plant, um, which hasn't come up with anything too promising, um, particularly with the, I guess, the, the volume of water that we need um, and, and the fact that we need um, control around that section of land to make sure that, it, um, you know, we don't have mm -hmm. contamination issues and things like that. Um, so I guess predominantly um, at this stage we're looking to use the, the Plura Dam as our primary source um, with the Matara River as our um, secondary source. Um, as part of the upgrade um, we are changing the media filter and the, the new media filter will have an improved um, ability to treat for taste and odour issues and things like that that we do tend to experience when we're taken from the Matara River. Um, and we are also just investigating some options to improve the um, the pumping system that we that we use when we take from the Pachara River, which will allow us to, to blend the water. Um, at the moment, the way that the infrastructure is set up, we either have to take 100% um, of our water from the Plura Dam or 100% from the Pachara River. So we're hoping that we can change that pumping arrangement and, and get a blended source when when we need it to. Um, we don't have to go to the Matara River very often, uh, but it is something that we are mindful of. Uh, that's a good answer. Of that. Um, thank you very much. Um, Neville, you've got a question? Thank you, Mr Chair. I've just got a question, Matt, on... Uh, I see in the report about the peak demand and how you asked or monitoring with the preferred tenders about not doing the preserved work during the during our um, high capacity. Was there any sort of comeback in that or is there going to be any extra cost because of that? Uh, no, I, I don't believe so. The, uh, the proposals that we're receiving, that we've received um, have, have allowed to accommodate that and they certainly haven't raised any issue with it. Um, so uh, I don't believe it's a major issue for them. Um, yeah, I, I guess we um, could potentially have, I, I'm not sure if we can have a, a discussion about it in open committee, um, but potentially in closed committee might be more appropriate. 
Thank you. You can raise that then, John. Thank you. Okay. Just, Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, this is a good example of a project going back to um, Michael's question of one where we felt uh, it's very important, but it could uh, be lost in the ruck of three waters reform, and we wanted to get it done uh, before three waters reform, and so we're fully compliant with drinking water standards both in Matara and Gore. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. So, water quality is a, uh, an ongoing. Um, oh, uh, a priority in the Gore District. Um, with that, I'll move that we uh, receive the report. Thank you for the report. Call for a seconder, please. Thank you, Stuart. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Item 6, Gore Multi Sports Complex Improvement Project. It was one of those opportunities through the Shovel Ready projects that the Council uh, took advantage of and received a substantial amount of money from central government to upgrade some improvement work and uh, it appears that this is all but completed and been completed successfully. Um, oh Matt, I'll hand over to you for a brief rundown. Uh, through the Chairman, um, yeah, so Martin Macrath, the um, multi-sports uh, manager, prepared this report. Um, so I haven't really been involved in it too much, so I probably can't add too much, but I guess as, you, as you'll see from his report, everything appears to be on track and tracking well, so I'm not sure. Mr Chair. Perry? Yeah, Mr Chairman, um, we are in the home straight. Um, so the, the roof uh, has been substantively completed now since well, early, early this year. It's a ventilation project that uh, was held up through resource consenting process uh, and designed the pad to actually accommodate the, the new unit we've already bought. Um, but it's all now starting to come together and I said the, the, the project is due to finish in the end of October. And I feel pretty proud really that we are two uh, project, sorry, shovel ready uh, projects uh, nearing completion with the big library and community rooms ref refurbishment next door uh, due to be finished around about January. Uh, so I think we've, as a council, have certainly fulfilled our part of the bargain. Um, and it's and, f and for the multi-sports complex, it really was um, a bit of a godsend because the event centre roof was um, in poor condition, even though it was only 10 years old, and that's money that we would have had to be fined through ratepayers. Uh, from what is already a, fu a fully taxed capital works program. So um, I think this, the staff, and Martin particularly, has done a fantastic job in corralling the different aspects of this project. Bear in mind that um, uh, Hashim, I won't try and pronounce his second name, I can't call it, but uh, he left in last October, and so Martin has had to really run this project along with staff shortages at the uh, pool uh, and done a great job, in my view. Uh, thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of comments. No doubt about it. This this demonstrably a pretty nimble of organisations, particularly when there's an opportunity to get money from central government to do work. Um, so congratulations, Mr. Chief Executive. Um, I don't think anybody else in local government is uh, even in the hunt when it comes to scavenging. Uh, finance from central government to complete work. Um, just a comment, yes, the multi-sports, great facility, 10 years old, but I guess it is, a, it is something for me that the original organisation that wasn't a council organisation that completed this work, it's, it's shown us that cutting the odd corner here and there is not successful. So council has been able to come in and and um, make good some of those little things, and they uh, so that the um, project will um, be in good heart for many years to come. So we are done all those concerned. Any questions, comments uh, before we close off that item? Thank you, Michael. 
Would you like to move or receive the report, Michael? On behalf of Michael, I will remove that we accept the report <laughs> and call for a second there. Uh, thank you, Neville. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against, it's carried. We need to actually um, find out about that, Michael, because it would be good if you did have that uh, ability. But, uh. Mr. Perry? I'll have to check that out, Michael. I, I thought you were a fully fledged member, but um, we don't see you with a, uh, a learner sticker on your forehead. Um, so, um, I, in my humble view, you should be a full member because uh, the idea was to cross pollinate the membership of both uh, Audit and Risk and Capital Works, particularly in respect of the independent members on both of those committees. So, I'll look into that. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Michael, it looks like you got a job. <laughs> Um, item seven, I haven't skipped one, have I? Uh, Hillbray, Hillbray Avenue <laughs> Reservoir Replacement Project. Um, another complex project, the, the old reservoir, um, aside from the water tower, is, is, is um, old and needs to be replaced. And I guess it's come to council's attention as just this suite of works where council is concentrating on upgrading essential infrastructure and water, water services. Um, there's uh, a report. Would somebody like to speak to the report? Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so obviously um, council <coughs> considered a report in July um, after some um, concerns had been raised by a structural engineer regarding the Hillbury Avenue water tower. Um, and potential for debris to fall from the tower. Um, and as a result of that, the council has decided to demolish the water tower. And, and, and as part of that, we need to construct a new pump station shed uh, to house existing pumps um, that are currently located in the water tower. Um, I guess uh, um, some, some preliminary works have been completed um, just to make sure that um, we we appropriately manage the um, health and safety risks to staff going onto that site in the short term. Um, so we're quite comfortable with, with that risk now. Um, and then we will go through and um, complete the design of, of the necessary pump shed and, and get that works completed before then demolishing the uh, water tower. Um, yeah, so happy to take any questions on that. I've just got a question. Thanks, Mr. Through the Chair. Is it, um, I see in the last the last column on page 25, and you've done a bit of modelling, and you think that you may have to expand the capacity of the pumps. And I see that you're building the shed to accommodate that. But what I'm thinking is that why are we going to go to this expense of putting the old pumps back into that we shed, and then possibly having to expand the pumps, maybe in a, in a very short space of time, that, that we may need to, well, why aren't we just saying that, okay, the total cost of expanding, et cetera, is this amount, and then the three waters ref reform, maybe that uh, is part of that aspect, is that this is gonna be the total cost, and then it's all done and dusted right from the word go. Yeah, through the chair, Thank, thanks for that. It's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess the first thing um, to note is, is the, the, the modelling that, that's been done is based on predicted growth, but there's, there's probably not a huge amount of certainty as to um, when or if that will occur. Um, so if you took that approach, you could do um, some upgrades and then not... Um, not get any benefit for a long time and it could be potentially quite significantly oversized. Um, I guess it would be different if you were putting in new pumps 
um, in, in which case you might go down that approach. Um, but because we've got existing pumps that are in good condition, um, we see it as, in, in terms of transferring those pumps, we see it as, as being a relatively easy um, and, and um, low cost exercise. Um, and as long as we, we design the pump station to accommodate the, the larger pumps in the future, then we can do that as and when required and we still get the, the full use out of the existing pumps rather than um, throwing them away earlier than, than, than they need to be. Um, it's, it's something that we'll probably give a bit more consideration to um, as, as the project develops. Um, but I, I, yeah, I guess I see it as, as potentially adding cost where we might not actually need, need it in the future. Um, but certainly we need to make that provision for it. Uh, so they were installed in 2008 or 2009, so yeah, coming about, about 12, 12 years. Um, so there's, there's three existing pumps, um, only one runs at a time, um, so there's, there's plenty of um, standby pumping there, um, and, and we don't have any issues with all three of the pumps, so that you know, we, we're expecting to get a, a reasonable um, amount of time out of them yet. So if we follow this timeline in uh, just over a year or 14 months, the water tear will be gone. That's correct. Questions, comments? So the, the demolition, um, we're looking at um, putting that out to tender uh, probably in the second quarter of 2023, so sort of around March, April 2023. Um, so we just want to make sure that we have certainty around the um, the pump relocation and, and timing of, of that before we go out to tender. Um, and it also aligns with the, the funding allocation um, to, to then have the work completed in the 23-24 financial year. Um, I guess just on that, there has been a reasonable level of interest around the, the demolition contract um, I've had a number of contractors get in contact with me so I guess I'm feeling really reasonably positive around um, getting a number of proposals and hopefully some cost effective proposals to, to do that work. Councillor Phillips. Thank you Mr Chair. Uh, just a question then, are you going to do it before the bridge is built or after? Uh, through the chair, yeah, so there's, there's nothing stopping us uh, demolishing the water tower um, before we have a pipeline between East Gore and, and Hilbury. It's the, the reservoir um, that needs the pipeline first, so certainly the, the plan is to put the pipeline in um, whatever form that might take um, across the river um, and then uh, then we'll already have the, the water tower demolished um, and at that point we'll be right to, to replace the reservoir. I'll wait with interest because you haven't convinced me. <laughs> That's why you were going to remain on council. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we... It, it, uh, We'll have continued discussions. Oh, look, I'll, I'll move that we receive that report and uh, there'll be some more discussion in part B and call for a seconder. I'll even call on Neville to second that. Uh, I'm sorry, Nick, I didn't see you. I'll get you next time. Um, those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. And that completes the public um, part of uh, this committee meeting and I will now move that we go into um, uh, public excluded